looking at the handout that I passed out on the right hand side, beside the two columns, I'm looking at the right hand side. We have not actually learned how to factor these types of problems yet. But it's not a big deal. Yes. Difference of squares is what that says. Difference of squares. I want to show you so that if something like this does arise in the UFC, you at least have seen it. Okay, you at least have an idea of how you might factor it. To factor using difference of squares, first of all, our problem may look like that. A squared minus B squared. To factor using difference of squares, you have to have two terms. You have to have two terms. You have to have subtraction. And you have to have perfect squares. You have to have all three of those. Two terms, subtraction, and perfect squares. And, and think about what the word difference of squares means. The word difference means subtraction, doesn't it? So that gives kind of a hint why we need subtraction. And squares, think perfect squares. We have to have those in order to factor. All right, so how are we going to factor? Well, to factor this, we're just going to take the square root. What is the square root of a squared? A. a. So a and a. What's the square root of b squared? B. b. One parenthesis I'm going to write as a plus b. The other parenthesis a minus b. And that's how we factor. That would be the factored form. So let's look at some of these on that right-hand side. Let's look at problem number one. x squared minus 4. Is this a difference of squares? Mm -hmm. We'll go through our list. Do we have two terms? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Do we have subtraction? Yes. yes. Do we have perfect squares? Yeah. yeah. And you can think of numeric perfect squares like 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, etc. We've looked at those already this year, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Perfect squares. So this is a difference of squares, so we can factor it as such. Two parentheses. What's the square root of x squared? X. And the square root of 4 is? 2. 2. two. So x plus 2, x minus 2. Look at number 3. 25x squared minus 81. Is this a difference of squares? Do we have two terms? Yeah. Subtraction? Yeah. Perfect squares. Yeah. Yes, 25 is a perfect square, so is x squared and 81. So what's the square root of 25x squared? 5x. 5x. And the square root of 81? 9. So one parenthesis is going to be 5x plus 9. The other is going to be 5x minus 9. What if I gave you this example, x squared plus 16? Is that a difference of squares? No. Why? It's addition. It's addition. Very good. In order to be diff to factor using difference of squares, we need subtraction. This has a plus in addition, so we cannot factor it as a difference of squares. So, one. so what do we say? It's not factorable. No, 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 no real answer. If something is not factorable, it's prime. It was said P. <laughs> let's say prime. All right, let's flip over to the other side if you would. We'll come back to the left hand column in a second. All right, so in the left hand, or the, the page 57 is what I'm looking at, this right here. Remember, when you're factoring, and this goes for any time you're factoring, we always do greatest common factor first, right? That's kind of our go-to, that's number one. Once we have tried greatest common factor, we've got two options. We could try box method. And now we may use difference of squares. So 
So greatest common factor is always the number one pick. From there, if you've got three terms, you might try box method. If you've got two terms, you might try squares. All right, so let's look at problem number one. What factoring method would you try first? Greatest common factor. Good. Greatest common factor. Now, is this one that you could even think about doing difference of squares with? No. Why? It's there's three terms. There's three terms. And typically, yeah, three, three terms, terms, what do we do? Three terms, what do we typically do? Box. We, okay, we might do greatest common factor, but with three terms, we typically would do box. And you guys are right, there is a greatest common factor here. What is the greatest common four. factor? Four. four. So let's factor out a four from each term. Remember, factoring out a four is like dividing everything by four. Now we can keep going. In parentheses, we have a trinomial that can be factored using the box. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 12 and add to 7. What two numbers are we looking at? 3 and 4. 3 and 4. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 plus 4 is 7. All right, now we've got our numbers in our box. You guys should be able to do greatest common factor for each row and column. When we write our factored answer, I am, of course, going to bring down that 4 that I factored out at the beginning. And then we'll have x plus 4, x plus 3. There are a couple of problems on this page that you're going to need to do greatest common factor first, and then you'll do difference of squares. So you might want to put a note there, do greatest common factor first. And it's kind of like what we just, I wrote down here with this little pyramid. Greatest common factor first, and then from there you're either going to do box method or difference of squares, if you have the necessary items to do those. the other side if you would. Looking at now the page with two columns, the left hand column. These problems here on the left hand side all pretty well have three terms, don't they? What, what factoring method do we generally do with three terms? Box method. Now there is at least one problem on that left hand column that you're going to have to do greatest common factor first. What problem am I looking at? Number six. Number six, you're going to do, need to do greatest common factor first, and then you should be able to set up your box. I think so. We are going to do evens only on this handout. Evens only. Both sides. <laughs> 